The other day, Sledgehammer did an AMA over on Reddit and asked me anything about Modern Warfare 3, and it was pretty refreshing to see. Just a candid level of communication, and to me, that's always appreciated. But today, we're going to wrap up what all was mentioned, what we can look forward to, and all things considered. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay with all things Modern Warfare 3. We got a bunch of stuff here before Season 1 upcoming, and of course, we'll keep you in the loop with all things you need to know in regards to Season 1 and the new Warzone launch. If you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. And finally, make sure to check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for a year best 35 plus percent off discount with code Espresso and come hang out with us live over on Twitch linked down below. But anyways, let's get into the answers and insight that Sledgehammer gave us in regards to Modern Warfare 3. First, let's start out with the content related insight. Firstly, we saw the confirmation of Gunfight coming here within Season 1 a little further, but with a bit more detail to it. Obviously, we knew that Gunfight would be coming back here based off of what we saw previewed a couple of days ago from official blog post, but it was mentioned that we'd see one new map as we knew of, but six total at the launch of Season 1, with shipment confirmed to be returning, along with four other carry forward maps from Gunfight in Modern Warfare 2, so bringing us to that total of six we'll end up seeing for those that do enjoy Gunfight. Now, shipment coming back is something that shouldn't be all that surprising. We'll see if it is introduced to 6v6 as well within the Season 1 launch immediately, or if for a time being it will only be a Gunfight exclusive map. We'll have to wait and see how that all breaks down, but we do know that it will be coming here. That's kind of a no-brainer. We've seen that happen in almost every single recent Modern Warfare, Infinity Ward, and even Sledgehammer game. So it's not something that I think anybody should really be surprised by, but we do have that official confirmation. They also mentioned that there's the potential in the future, while it's not planned initially, that if there was enough interest from the community, then maybe we'd end up seeing a 1v1 playlist in the future as well, which would be kind of cool to see. Might be a bit more niche for some people compared to others. But anyways, moving on, classic weaponry was brought up here, where someone asked specifically about the Spaz-12, where they said there are multiple classic weapons from the Modern Warfare universe that we're looking to add in future seasonal updates, including shotguns and sniper rifles. So while it was not directly confirmed, it looks like at least how this may appear is that it's hinted at the Spaz-12 and other classic weapons coming back. And we also know of the F-2000 coming. That was something that was meant to be seemingly at launch or was there within the initial leaks that looked to be at launch that the F-2000 would be coming as the Anvil B. There was an AK-556 there was an unnamed sniper rifle that kind of looked like the ballista so lots of content already known plus still a ton on the way so classic and new weaponry here that we maybe haven't seen in the modern warfare universe just yet looks to all be happening as well war maps will be coming through seasonal updates where it was said we're happy to share that additional war maps are expected during our seasonal updates in the months ahead though that doesn't make it sound like we'll see one initially with season one and honestly I'm not really surprised by that based off of the three original 6v6 maps in Season 1 and 2 already guaranteed, the new Warzone experience coming with Season 1 and Urzikstan and everything like that. I just feel like War didn't make it off the cutting room floor at that point, if there was even something even available to be released at that point. But we will see more War maps coming in the future. Now, on the prospect of other regular maps here for multiplayer, most will be brand new, it's been confirmed. There may be the potential for some remasters down the line, but what isn't planned is Modern Warfare 2 from 2009, the DLC maps that we saw back then, being remastered here for this game. It was stated there are no plans for these specific maps to return when asked about Carnival, Storm, Trailer Park, and Fuel at this time. Our seasonal updates will largely be made of all new maps. So that's something that I can get behind. I'm definitely happy to see that kind of stuff happen. And we'll see all Season 1 and Season 2 break down how we know we're guaranteed three brand new maps in each of those. So we'll see how it all goes, but that seems to be the plan for right now, is that most of the maps post-launch look to be brand new maps. Now, beyond that, we know we'll have plenty of seasonal events coming. That was reiterated that plenty of events are coming. And it's actually interesting because we've already seen a few leaked, data mined, and confirmed. There's a Makarov event, which should be coming here apparently before season one's launch, if all things are correct, meaning that it might be right after the endowment event finishes up that we go right into another event here with yet another camo at the end of that. That one apparently being animated too, which is pretty cool. There's also been found a Christmas event and another The Boys event event so that's all interesting for sure and a lot of stuff to keep you engaged here i think in a more meaningful manner as opposed to like skill-based matchmaking or other stuff that is like more manipulative in nature this instead giving you something to actually like work towards which i think is a good way to do it 
That's just me personally, but different story maybe for a different day. There also was the discussion of wrappable streaks in multiplayer, how in Black Ops Cold War you saw this most recently, but there was still that timer on getting those again. But every game pre-Modern Warfare 2019 had the ability to end up getting your kill streaks more than one time in a life. But Modern Warfare 2019, Vanguard, and Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 here changed that for some reason. But Sledgehammer said they're open to trying this out in the experimental playlist, stating this is something that the team definitely wants to try out. One of the cool things about our experimental playlist is that it gives us a chance to see how things would work out in the wild. Expect to see something like this in the future experimental playlist and make sure to share your feedback in the survey we place in the message of the day. So I'd be all for that. I would love to see that happen, even if just in the experimental playlist, but fingers crossed they could go to something more. I love the ability to get more than one UAV, more than one advanced UAV in a life if I'm going on a massive tear. And honestly, a lot of the times I'll end up choking my streaks because oftentimes if I'm going that hard, my team's usually doing pretty poorly. I don't know why it just seems to be that seesaw effect of all the kills funneling to one person or across the team. I don't know, but it's just one of those things I'd love to get the chance to provide myself the chance to succeed further rather than having to rely on my team in those moments. But anyways, non-disbanding lobbies was another thing that was mentioned here that is going to be tested in the future. It said, in a future game update, we'll be testing non-disbanding lobbies with a cohort of players to determine the performance of such a change. If these tests go well, we'll explore a rollout to all players. And that is huge because we saw something like this mentioned towards the end of Modern Warfare 2, I want to say, but nothing really ever came of that. But non-disbanding lobbies, I think, would be something that really just is a stepping stone to getting back to that feel of the classic Call of Duty. Right now, of course, skill-based matchmaking, engagement optimization-based matchmaking, that stuff just really kicks you in the balls. But when you have these things like non-disbanding lobbies, that might be something where you feel the effects less of that because you're playing with the same group of people. You're not constantly refreshing and getting that new set of players that is always going to be those ones that are on your skill level or above. Non-disbanding lobbies may not be the be-all end-all of COD, but there's certainly a step in the right direction. I I think. Now, beyond that, talking a little bit about how matches go, combat pacing was something that was brought up, where they mentioned, we love to hear from players who enjoyed combat pacing in Vanguard. While there isn't a plan to bring the exact system forward, we were planning to experiment with intensity. Since some of the maps have a lot of play space, we expect the upcoming 10v10 playlist to scratch that combat pacing itch. But they also kind of alluded to it being potentially more than 10v10 in the future, which I think would be pretty cool. Obviously, the original ground war pacing was 9v9 back in the day, so 10v10 is just slightly above that. But again, with this now being live, I'm sure that you have probably noticed that it's possible to fit more players in here, and it probably wouldn't disrupt the flow too much. Of course, obviously adding players in at any point disrupts the flow a little bit, but to the point where it's not playable, I don't think we're there yet. So I'd love to see maybe a 12v12 introduced here with that. I think that'd be cool. But anyways, theater mode was also something that was mentioned where that unfortunately isn't going to be happening. They just confirmed everybody's suspicions that theater mode requires significant time and resources to implement. Because of this, we currently do not have any plans for it in Modern Warfare 3. And same thing with something that was asked about that was a big feature back in the day of headquarters from World War II. That unfortunately as well will not be returning. They stated, to this day, we're incredibly proud of the headquarters in Call of Duty World War II. Unfortunately, such a feature is a large undertaking. Because of this, there are currently no plans for it to return in Modern Warfare 3. And that's one of those things that honestly, I bet that if Sledge didn't have to turn around and make this game in sub 16 months, that they had a full three year developmental window, I bet they'd be looking to bring that back in. And honestly, same could have been said probably for Vanguard because that game was made in a shortened time frame as well, probably about in again, 16 ish months, not a three year developmental window. I know personally a ton of devs who were really proud of that feature back in the day that they were able to pull it off. And I bet they'd want to see that return in a heartbeat if it could happen. Now that's content and gameplay in sites that they gave us, but let's talk a little bit about fixes on the way as well. Firstly, the Gaia Groot skin, as people are calling it from the Battle Pass in Season 6, the tree figure. That is actually going to be removed temporarily, where they stated adjustments to the Gaia and Gaia Black Cell Operator skins are in the pipeline for Modern Warfare 3. In a future game update, we'll disable this item until the said changes can be released to all players. Now, this is just dealing simply with visibility. It is a very tough skin to see in dark scenarios. It is something that may give a genuine advantage, and it's something that I kind of wish we saw happen with the Rose skin back in the day in Modern Warfare 2019 and those iterations of Warzone that we saw where they just blended in with the dark corners. I feel like that would have been a very simple way to do it, especially while making any sort of adjustments, but we'll see how that works in terms of what adjustments come out of that, but just know that it will be removed temporarily, not forever. 
There also is going to be a fix for the ghost perk coming where it's going to cover players a little bit and have that cooldown where right now, even if you stop dead instantaneously, you're seen on the UAV. This will add a little bit of a cooldown from when you're sprinting or running to then ending up having that stable lack of motion per se. That's going to cover you for those couple of seconds coming up rather than just not giving you any cover as it does now. The RGL 80 and scatter mines will have some fixes here to this and some toning down in the damage properties they afford. The frag grenade is going to have a nerf where that's going to lower the damage. I feel like you could just buff EOD instead of lowering the damage of the grenade overall, but alas, that's what we're going to see changed. Final kill cams will be fixed in hardcore. Mouse input issues are going to be fixed out where they said the team is aware of a few things that may be contributing to what you're describing, where it's a sort of like differentiation in mouse acceleration leading to a floaty feeling, but they said they're going to be looking into that. So that's definitely nice as well. Desync and hit reg issues were touched on, but it was something that it was kind of just a standard PR answer of like, hey, we work with our teams over at Demonware for matchmaking and all that kind of stuff, and we'll be working to improve that in the future. Nothing really definitive given for that, but of course, the biggest thing, no mention of skill-based matchmaking. Brutally honest, I'm amazed that anyone thought that it'd be brought up anyways, considering out of the last five years, we know that it's a thing and it has not been touched on at any point during that last five years. I would have loved to seen it be answered, but it was one of those things that I feel like everything, the cool insight that we got was overshadowed by still people saying skill-based matchmaking. And like, I don't understand why we don't get even just the acknowledgement that it exists. Like I'm hundred percent there with you. We all know it exists, but it's just like, I don't know why we can't ever just even just be like, yeah, you guys are right. It's it's there. I mean, I'm not expecting them to break down the exact details of how the matchmaking system works and everything like that. That would truly never happen. You'd have a better chance of hitting the lottery five times in a row than that happening, probably. But like, we all know it's there. So like, why, why can't we get any information on it? You know, I don't know. But it is one of those things that if you were looking for that answer or some sort of insight into why skill-based matchmaking feels so cranked up, well, you weren't going to get it with this one, unfortunately. And I probably wouldn't get my hopes up to see that explained anywhere in the near future either. So yeah, I get it. It's frustrating. I'm there with you. But that is where we're at here at this. That is the recap of the Ask Me Anything here and the insight we got from Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer, both on the content side and also on like the gameplay fixing side. So that said, that is we're going to wrap it up. Before we do, though, I want to let you guys know about my friends over at Gamer Advantage for a short window of time here. Gamer Advantage is a site-wide 25% off discount where Code Espresso can stack to give you 35% percent plus off your entire order the best discount we've seen all year so far there's a few specific items here that go above 35 percent for black friday but if you guys want to check out what i firmly believe are the best blue light glasses on the market now is as best a time as any i've worked with these guys for nearly three years now and cannot recommend them enough they're the most lightweight comfortable and durable frames on the market as far as i've used and definitely think they've helped my daily productivity full transparency they are a bit of an investment but i do think that your vision is absolutely worth investing into especially if you're like me you look at a monitor phone or gaming for a good chunk of the day if you guys would like to learn more at the very least i'd recommend checking out their website where they can break down the science and all the specifics way better than i can but what i can personally say is that i, I love every pair that i've had through them so if you guys want to learn more check the link in the description below and if you'd like to pick something up for yourself use code espresso to get upwards of 35 percent plus off your entire order but that said, that is, we're going to wrap it up. So let me know your thoughts down below. What did you guys think of the insight provided by Sledgehammer here? What do you think of the upcoming changes in content to Modern Warfare 3? Like it, dislike it, whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing reading all things Modern Warfare 3 as we gear up for season one upcoming while also still having a ton of stuff that I want to cover that we haven't quite gotten to from the launch window. But love to have you in the community. For now, though, thanks so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.